All right, guys, so today I wanna to talk about what we call our passionate work framework. And what this is is just three simple, really, steps or pillars that we've noticed that every inspired, passionate, world-changing employee or entrepreneur or whoever has in common, the ones that wake up inspired and excited to do the work that they do. And whether they're running a company of 10,000 people or a bakery down the street or anything in between, employee or entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. These three things we've noticed everyone has in common. And really from a result of what, over a decade of research, uh, ever since I first started working on Live Your Legend, and with thousands of people from really every country in the world at this point. So we're just going to dive into them. And the, the first one is to become a self-expert and, and really embrace just the whole idea of really understanding who you are and this idea of self-experimentation. Because the way I see it, life is either one big experiment or a series of mini experiments that are constantly being evaluated and you kind of correct as you go. It's kind of like, a, you think of like a sailboat sailing, you know, it's never sailing in a directly straight line. It's kind of tacking back and forth. And that's how, how life is, because we're learning and adjusting as we go. And so the idea is that you'll never find what you're looking for if you don't know what that is. So we need to know what are we good at? What do we love? What are we excited about? What do we hate? What are our values, our strengths, our talents? And this is what I call the compass. And it really has four different parts to it. One is your values. So what are the things that you really care about? What matters? Is it health? Is it, is it family? Is it love connection? Is it achievement? Is it status? That helps order and prioritize the other things that we go after. And also what are your natural strengths and talents? And uh, StrengthsFinder 2.0 is an incredible online ins assessment that we always recommend. We're not affiliated with them, but I do love it and I um, give it to people all the time. But uh, the point is, what are these underlying strengths? Because there's a lot of research, especially from the Gallup organization, that shows that the more time we spend executing on our strengths and talents on a routine basis, on a daily basis, the more fulfilled we are in our work. And the opposite is also true. If we spend all of our time in spreadsheets, when our strengths are being in front of people and communicating, we're not going to be happy with the way that we work. Uh, now, the beautiful thing is, is that that often means that a small change in how we apply our strengths at our current job could actually cause us to dramatically increase our enjoyment without ever having to make some drastic change or, or quit, at least right now. And so uh, the first part of the compass is your values. Second is your strengths and your talents. And then your experiences. What are the things that have happened up to today that you've you've loved, what have inspired you, what have excited you, whether it's things that you've done that you've been most proud of, also things that other people have done. When you've seen someone maybe give a talk on stage or read about them in a book and you say, you know what, I'd love to be like them. I'd love to build what they've built. What is it about that? And you want to get in the habit of writing this stuff down. I know when I used to live in, in Spain, I was meeting all these inspiring people doing all these cool things. I um, just started keeping a journal and I'd write these things down when I'd see someone doing something cool. And over time, I had this huge repository of stuff of these different inspiring ideas that I was able to piece together and kind of look for what is the common ground and how can we make some sense out of this stuff. And as importantly as what you, what inspires you and what excites you and what you love, what do you hate? What can you not stand? And what jobs have you had? What projects have you worked on where it just did not mesh with who you were? Or what type of people do you work with? We just want to get as many data points on who we are as possible. And, and the beautiful thing is if we've been around the earth for, for over a, a decade or two, we know enough about this stuff as long as we sit down and think it through. And, and those are the three parts of our compass. And then the fourth one is defining our own success. And you can only really do that once you know your values, your strengths, passions, talents, and your experiences. And the point of this is that most of us are kind of funneled into this definition of, definition of success that really isn't meaningful to anyone specifically. It's more of a societal definition of climbing this ladder to nowhere or um, just trying to get the status and the money and the things that are easy to measure. But once we know what we care about, it's much easier to identify when things come our way. Because if we don't know what matters to us and who we really are, our life's work could come and hit us in the face and we might just brush it off in annoyance because we don't realize, we can't recognize that, wow, that's it. But then when we know who we are, we can we could grab a hold of that and say, you know what, I'm going to run with this. I'm going to do something with this. And, and really, that's even how Live Your Legend first started. I remember taking a Strengths Finder test and it said I should focus on these things like learning and teaching and, um, and, and sharing stories and all these different things that I realized, wow, like this is what I'm already doing, but I can do it on a much deeper level. And I decided just to go nuts with it. And, and so again, that's the point. If you, you need to know what you're looking for, if you want to have a chance at finding it. And so that's where it, where the whole idea of becoming a self-expert starts. And, and that is, so that's our first pillar 
Okay, so the second pillar is to do your own impossible. And what we really want to do is get in the habit of doing the things that we told ourselves couldn't be done. Because the challenge is that most people, and when we go out to pursue things that we care about or take the road less traveled, a lot of times the people around us will, will doubt us or tell us it's impossible or, or that it can't be done. And, and a lot of times we'll start to believe it. And so that will either cause us to never start in the first place or give up way too early. And so we want to get in this habit of making these little incremental displays to ourselves and to the people around us, but most importantly to ourselves, that we can do these different things. And so what I love is to start in the physical world because it's totally in our control. And I'm talking about with like the physical body with fitness and things. So um, it doesn't matter where you start. The only point is making progress. So the idea is like if you all of a sudden could show yourself you could lose 10 or 15, 20, 30, 40 pounds, what's to say that you can't go and double your business's sales next year or start that charity that you've always wanted to start or quit that job? Uh, same goes with, let's say you don't think you can, I don't know, walk a mile and then you go out and run a mile eventually and two miles, three miles, maybe run a marathon. Again, it doesn't matter where you end up, but making this progress, showing yourself that you can do these things you used to kind of discredit yourself for. And um, I would always always suggest for the physical stuff, go to a, a marathon finish line at uh, just in your local town or, or city there. There's probably something happening within the next month or so and show up at four hours at the finish line and watch the shapes and sizes and ages of people and weights of people who, who cross the finish line. You won't believe it when you see the, the man who's maybe twice your age and, and maybe 20 or 30 pounds heavier than you who finishes in four hours. Now, four hours is a great marathon time, um, but it, it just shows you like, wow, like this stuff can be done as long as we give ourselves a chance to do that. And this is why I c constantly make a habit of pursuing the so-called impossible for myself. I mean, like last year, I ran a 50 mile ultra marathon with a good friend of mine. I've never run a sanctioned marathon. I shouldn't say I actually ran it. It was like a hobble. Um, I almost got lost last place. It took almost 14 hours and got beat by dozens of men and women twice my age. But that wasn't the point. The point was, if you can cover that kind of ground, um, what else could you do? And it, of course, doesn't need to start there. You know, I, I once did a swim from Alcatraz. I remember with a, a group of people where I was terrified to do the swim. because I was scared of uh, cold, dark water. And um, it was a mile and a half swim across the San Francisco Bay. And the reason I felt like I could do it is because 80% of the people or so that were doing it with me that day were 9 to 13 years old. And I was 28 years old. So, and they were the ones cheering me on and showing me what could be done. And so um, I remember finishing that swim and half the kids were already cheering me on when I finished. They had already finished ahead of me. And I saw a kid finish after me and he was kind of flailing his arms and it didn't look pretty. It looked like he was really struggling. And, and when he got to the beach, uh, two people, adults, ran up and grabbed him and dragged him. He was totally limp. And they dragged him and plopped him down in his wheelchair. And when they did, he's just face lit up with this huge fist in the sky, like sign of victory like I've never seen. And I would have never expected when I saw him that morning that he would be swimming when he was in his wheelchair. And that's the point. It's like, what if you swam across the San Francisco Bay when you were 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old? you start to operate on a different level. And so again, with this stuff, start really, really small, so small that you can't not do it. And then watch how it can relate to the rest of your, rest of your world. Because we just need to get in the habit of showing ourselves that we can do the things that we told ourselves couldn't be done. And that starts to ripple across our entire life. Just because you, let's say, ran longer than you thought, that isn't just for a fitness goal. That applies to everything else. It's kind of like the Trojan horse, which is which is beautiful. And that goes with anything too. I mean, it's same with writing, you know, you want to, um, you've never written, let's say, I don't know, a, a 20 page article. Well, we'll start by writing a couple sentences a day and then you build up to that. And all of a sudden you're there, but only if you start super small and, and kind of prove that to yourself. So, um, that is the, the doing the impossible thing is such an unexpected, um, benefit or unexpected power, I guess that, that exists in doing work you love when it is completely unrelated, when you just look at kind of where you're accomplishing these different goals. And then our third pillar is really where things get magical and it kind of ties them all together. So number three is to surround yourself with inspiring and passionate people. And the point of this is that the fastest way to do the things you don't think can be done is to hang around people already doing them. And that is the magic of all this. That is what makes the impossible possible. And which of course is number two. So this, and this goes back to, dates way back in history to, I think 1898 is where it first started with Norman Triplett. He was studying cyclists and he wanted to see how fast they cycled in different scenarios. And so he, he timed them by themselves and then with groups of cyclists. 
And every time the groups would cycle significantly faster. And this was later coined as the term social facilitation. And it's just simple. If you're around people in general, you tend to perform on a different level. And if you're around people who are high performers, it completely changes, changes and transforms the way that you show up. And this can be done in any walk of life. If you want to run that marathon, hang out with people who run 20 miles or 10 miles before breakfast every morning. And you'll start to feel like that's normal. But if your friends, you know, every weekend wake up and they go watch sports and drink beer all day, your odds of running that 26 miles are a whole lot lower. And the beauty of it, though, is when you start to hang around these people, it, you don't even necessarily need to change your goals uh, directly. When you hang around, let's say, these runners, you'll start to feel like you deserve it. It's almost like if, if they could do it, then, then why couldn't I? And with me, like in Building Live Your Legend, this was the, this was the perfect example for me that um, I experienced very, very viscerally, really, when I was building things for four years, Live Your Legend didn't grow at all. Literally four years and no traffic, no new uh, subscribers, no new community members. And then I moved to San Francisco and started to meet some people, both online and in person, who built these incredible businesses and communities based on their talents and strengths and passions, and, and then leveraged those to help people in meaningful ways and live these awesome lifestyles. And when I saw that, I got incredibly inspired. And when I did, I, I remember I was on the verge of actually shutting my project down because it wasn't growing at all. It was starting to get very frustrating. But instead, I got super inspired because I saw a path. I saw what they were doing, and I did everything I could to surround myself with them. With them. We went on workouts together and uh, double dates with our wives and you know, had, had beers and Skype sessions and whatever it was, both online and in person. And within six months of that point, Live Your Legend grew by 10x. And then within another 12 months, it grew by, I think, 160x. And it's since grown tremendously from that day. And, and now we have over 100,000 people from every country in the world that use our career and connection tools on a monthly basis. And... You might ask like, well, what the heck happened? 0% growth for four years and then a little over a year and it just goes like a hockey stick. And it was simple. For four years, I knew nobody. I knew nobody who did this stuff. I didn't know it was possible. I didn't even know, I didn't have the capacity to even dream about that stuff. But then all of a sudden I'm around them and my thinking went from how could I possibly do this to how could I possibly not? And like right then it like, it just ripples across your world when that, when that happens. And you start to think like, well, if they can do it, then, then why not me? And you start to operate on a new level. And again, this goes for every walk of life. And I think most importantly, the work that you do, since it embodies so much of who you are, if, you know, when we were building Live Your Legend, we used to be all career tools and which, you know, are important and powerful, but they're useless if the people around you tell you you're stupid for using them. And so that's where this whole thing about community comes in. And that's why now we have our free Live Your, Lo Live Your Legend local communities and we have what do we have, 300 now in 300 cities in over 70 countries uh, all over the world, you know, Kenya um, to, uh, let's see, Kuwait and Sydney and San Francisco and Cape Town and South Africa, all over the place to give people that safe environment of passionate, inspiring people who believe in the same things. And when you do that, things start to transform. And the beauty, beautiful thing about the passionate work framework, these three steps, self-discovery, become a self-expert, do your own impossible and then surround yourself with passionate people is that the surrounding yourself with passionate people often starts to fill in the gaps of the other two tremendously. It allows you to do your own impossible and it allows you to understand who you are and seeing other people doing inspiring things helps you understand what you care about and, and how you want to show up in the world. And I guess the beautiful thing about this is that all three of these things are 100% in your control. And you can decide to do something about them. You can decide to hang around the people who inspire you, or you can sit around and let the people who are around you on a day-to-day -day basis pull you down. Uh, it, the choice is yours. And we provide that community that if we're totally for free at Live Your Legend, that's just part of our duty. I feel like it's a responsibility. So that's the three-step passionate work framework. And what I'd suggest you guys do right now is two things. One is I gave a TEDx talk in San Francisco a couple years ago where we really dissected the passionate work framework and how it applies to different walks of life. And um, I've been in awe that that's gotten over 2 million views and, and ranks at over, I think, top 20 in over 40,000 talks, uh, TEDx talks. Uh, I would definitely check that out. Very worth a few minutes. And then we have at Live Your Legend, we have a free toolkit for everyone who joins our community. And it's a very in-depth set of resources, workbooks and, and guides and videos and all kinds of things. So um, that's at liveyourlegend.net just slash toolkit. Um, so dive into that. Links are below. And... I just, I can't wait to hear what you guys discover and come back and share it with us.